From Palma on Mallorca, we're flying to Frigari on the French island of Corsica. Making landfall on Corsica, we're struck by how rugged the landscape is. From the airport in Frigari, we head to Sartine, a beautiful hill town dating back to the Middle Ages. Granite buildings from the early 16th century line the narrow streets. Today, the streets are filled with shops and restaurants catering to the tourists. At the center of the village is the Place de la Liberation. The square is dominated by the Church of St. Mary, built in 1766. This cross and chains in the corner of the church are used for the Catenaccio, one of the oldest Corsican religious events. Around Sartine, our guide has pointed out these markers. On Good Friday evening, an anonymous barefoot penitent carries the cross and drags the chain over a one-mile circuit, reenacting Christ's climb to Golgotha. The liberation in Place de la Liberation is about this guy, Pasquale Paoli, who declared the Corsican Republic independent from Genoa in November 1755. He created the Corsican Constitution, the first such document based on Enlightenment principles. Genoa recognized that they couldn't put down the revolution, so they sold Corsica to France in 1764, and the French invaded in 1768. On the way to our hotel, we experienced some of the rugged Corsican landscape. With a little imagination, you can see the lion of Roccapina in this pile of rocks. The Genoese ruled Corsica from 1284 to 1764, but they never really conquered the Corsican people who controlled the interior of the island. We have arrived at the very modern Hotel Casa del Mar in Porto Vecchio. It's quite a contrast from medieval Sartine. Dinner at the Michelin two-star Casa del Mar restaurant starts with cocktails and a beautiful sunset. We know we're in for an experience when they start with Fruit Spheres, a molecular gastronomy creation. The sea bream cannelloni with spider crab and caviar. It looks good and it tastes even better. Sherry tries a local specialty, frigola, a pasta risotto. As if we needed a piece de la restance, the dessert summed up the dinner, a feast for the senses. This morning, we'll be exploring Bonifacio, Corsica's oldest town. It was founded in 828 by Bonifacio II of Tuscany to protect against pirates. Most of the citadel was built after the 12th century when the Genovese captured the town from the Pisans. This tower is definitely part of the 9th century fortifications. The fortifications looked out across the Straits of Bonifacio to Sardinia, seven and a half miles away. The citadel is located on a thumb of land separated from the mainland by what our guide called a fjord, but technically it's a ria, a drowned river valley. Today the harbor is home to pleasure boats, tour boats, and some pretty spectacular yachts. The narrow streets lead past intriguing doorways and windows to small squares surrounded by restaurants and souvenir shops. Most of the buildings date to the Genoese time. There's some interesting plaques with coats of arms of the original owner. This one says, Louis Salviticus, Potestat of Bonifacio, commissioned this work at his own expense in 1488. Today the plaque remains, but the work referred to is long gone. The many churches are easier to date. The chapel of St. John the Baptist was built in 1785. The oldest churches have been surrounded by other buildings over the centuries. The beautiful church of Santa Maria Maggiore was started in the 12th century. The church of St. Dominic of Bonifacio is the largest church in Corsica. It was started in the late 13th century. Today it's primarily used for concerts due to its ex excellent acoustics. And we're here for a performance of traditional Corsican polyphonic songs by Spartera. 
These songs are traditionally sung by three men without accompaniment. Each singer has a role. Busso is the one with the strongest voice to provide structure. Secunda is the one who sings the song. Terza is the singer with the highest range who can embellish the song. You'll also see the singers put their hand over their ear. This is allows them to hear their own voice. And back into town to find lunch and some more photos that just have to be taken. We settle on Stella Doro for a perfectly prepared grill sea bream. We hurry down through the lower town to the harbor. Now we're going to see Bonifacio from the water side. We round the point where the lighthouse stands at the entrance to the harbor. There's a grotto in the limestone cliff. It looks like the captain is gonna give us a close look. But look, there's another boat in there. I guess we'll all fit. We just saw another boat come out and the captain does this several times every day. These cliffs do look pretty unassailable. And the waterfront view is really good. The diagonal cut in the cliff is the King of Aragon stairs. Legend has it that the troops of the King of Aragon carved out the stairs in a single night during the siege of 1420. In reality, the 187 steps were dug by Franciscan monks to reach a natural spring. Some of the houses look like they have a tenuous hold on the cliff. Looking south, that's Sardinia in the distance. Then back to the harbor. The citadel looks even more formidable from the water. Back at the Hotel Casa del Mar, they've been busy carving pumpkins for our barbecue tonight. But not just any barbecue. There's a rotisserie salmon, 
chicken, and beef. And the salads are works of art. In the morning, we're back at Frigari Airport and boarding our plane. There are more islands in the Mediterranean. <laughs>